Welcome to another episode of our journey with Dan Barker's God the Most Unpleasant Character in All Fiction. In this episode, we will go through chapter 6, which is titled Vindictive. The chapter starts with this passage. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. Isaiah chapter 47 verse 3. Dan states one of the reasons Protestants split off from Catholics was the issue of the priesthood. Catholics insist there are human intermediaries between people and God. A higher class of priests, bishops, archbishops, cardinals, popes, and saints. The church was charging money for the privilege of going through one of these special people to petition God. It got really bad when they began selling indulgences, which were like get out of jail tickets to buy your way out of hell. The Roman Catholic Church to this day maintains the elevated status of ordained human beings who inhabit a loftier status of humanity closer to God. Martin Luther and other Reformation thinkers challenged this classist hierarchy. They rebelled against the supreme authority of the church and insisted that each human being has direct access to God. Baptists are one of the groups that adhere to the doctrine of the priesthood of all believers. So it is curious that Protestants do not join me in denouncing the vindictive God of the Old Testament for brutally crushing a similar reformation attempt while the Israelites were wandering in the wilderness. The squashing literally of that rebellion was worse than any torture of the Inquisition. It was unimaginably cruel and of truly biblical proportion. In the 16th chapter of the book of Numbers, so-called because it contains a couple of censuses, we read the story of Korah, a precursor to Martin Luther. Moses was the ordained leader of the Israelites, and all of God's instructions came exclusively through him and his brother Aaron the high priest, a nice nepotism. God spoke directly to Moses and Aaron was allowed to approach the Holy of Holies where God was enthroned. Like crowd that was roped off from the Mount Sinai, the common people had to humbly rely on those two intermediaries for guidance and blessings from the deity. A man named Korah and 250 leaders of the Levite tribe thought that was not right. Why cannot God speak to any human being? Like Martin Luther addressing the Pope and Cardinals, Korah said to Moses and Aaron, Numbers chapter 16, verse 3. You have gone too far. The whole community is holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? Then adds, good question, why do clergy exalt themselves above the congregation? People who are being led have the natural right to ask, who gave you the authority? The rebe rebellious Protestants who also believed that all the congregation are holy asked that very question of the Holy Roman Church. Moses might have replied, I respect your honest question, but we are going through tough times right now times that require a temporary military structure with top-down authority. Please be patient. When we get settled in the promised land, we will discuss your well, well-intentioned concerns. Instead, when Moses heard this, he fell face down. Then he said to Korah and all his followers, In the morning the Lord will show who belongs to him and who is holy, and he will have that person come near him. The man he chooses he will cause to come near him. You, Korah, and all your followers are to do this. Take censers and tomorrow put burning coals and incense in them before the Lord. The man the Lord chooses will be the one who is holy. You Levites have gone too far. Numbers chapter 16 verses 5 to 7. God told Moses to tell the Israelites. He warned the assembly. Move back from the tents of these wicked men. Do not touch anything belonging to them, or you will be swept away because of all their sins. 
Numbers chapter 16, 26. Moses, like all autocrats and popes throughout history, labeled his detractors wicked men. Their honest question was called a sin. What happens next needs Hollywood special effects to visualize. Probably I need to use the dramatized version here. Numbers chapter 16 verses 28 to 33. Then Moses said, This is how you will know that the Lord has sent me to do all these things and that it was not my idea. If these men die a natural death and suffer the fate of all mankind, then the Lord has not sent me. But if the Lord brings about something totally new, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them with everything that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the realm of the dead, then you will know that these men have treated the Lord with contempt. As soon as he finished saying all this, the ground under them split apart, and the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them and their households and all those associated with Korah, together with their possessions. They went down alive into the realm of the dead with everything they owned. The earth closed over them, and they perished and were gone from the community. Dan states, the earth cracked open and swallowed good thinking Protestants because these men have despised the Lord. Talk about vindictive. Korah was not an unbelieving pagan. He and his followers were part of God's chosen people who wanted to be closer to their Lord, just like Luther, Calvin, Zwingli, and Servetus and just like most believers today who pray directly to God rather than rely on intermediaries. History shows us how the Pope tried to swallow alive the insubordinate reformers who challenge their supreme authority. But don't blame the Roman Catholic Church. The Pope was actually acting more biblically in a more godly manner more like Moses than the Protestants. If you want to be God-like, you must be autocratic, cruel. Uh, next, uh, Dan goes through some examples from the Bible. God of Vengeance, Psalm 94, verse 1. Psalm 94 O Lord God, to whom vengeance belongeth, O God, to whom vengeance belongeth, show thyself. I will take revenge. Deuteronomy 32, verse 35. To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand. And the things that shall come upon them make haste. Sword of Vengeance. Leviticus 26, verse 25. And I will bring a sword upon you, that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when ye are gathered together within your cities, I will send the pestilence among you, and ye shall be delivered into the hand of the enemy. Garments of Vengeance Isaiah 59, verse 17 For he put on righteousness as a breastplate, and an helmet of salvation upon his head, and he put on the garments of vengeance for clothing, and was clad with zeal as a cloak. Payback time for God's enemies. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 64 to 66. Render unto them a recompense, O Lord, according to the work of their hands. Give them sorrow of heart, thy curse unto them. Persecute and destroy them in anger from under the heavens of the Lord. Payback time for the Amalekites. First Samuel chapter 15 verses 1 and 2. Chapter 15 Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him and the way when he came up from Egypt. Payback time for the Babylonians. Psalm 137 verses 8 to 9. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones.
Speaking to female Babylon, Isaiah 47, verses 3 to 4. Thy nakedness shall be uncovered, yea, thy shame shall be seen. I will take vengeance, and I will not meet thee as a man. As for our Redeemer, the Lord of hosts is his name, the Holy One of Israel. Here, Dan comments, uncover nakedness is a euphemism for sexual assault. This means Babylon will be raped. Next, armed vengeance against the Med Midianites. Numbers chapter 31, verse 3. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Avenge the children of Israel of the Midianites. Afterward shalt thou be gathered unto thy people. And Moses spake unto the people, saying, Arm some of yourselves unto the war, and let them go against the Midianites, and avenge the Lord of Midian. Weapons of Vengeance Arrows Drunk with Blood Deuteronomy chapter 32 verses 41 to 42 If I whet my glittering sword, and mine hand take hold on judgment, I will render vengeance to mine enemies, and will reward them that hate me. I will make mine arrows drunk with blood, and my sword shall devour flesh, and that with the blood of the slain and of the captives, from the beginning of revenges upon the enemy. Vengeance on Enemies, Deuteronomy 32, verse 43. Rejoice, O ye nations, with his people, for he will avenge the blood of his servants, and will render vengeance to his adversaries, and will be merciful unto his land and to his people. I will do to them what they did to me. Deuteronomy 32, verse 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Decapitating Revenge, Second Samuel chapter 4, verse 8. And they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, thine enemy, which sought thy life. And the Lord hath avenged my lord the king this day of Saul and of his seed. God caused a drought because his temple was in ruins. Haggai chapter 1, verses 9 to 11. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, saith the Lord of hosts? Because of mine house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. God's Day of Vengeance, Isaiah 34, verse 8. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance, and the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion. It's vengeance with terrible consequences, Isaiah 35, verse 4. Say to them that are of a fearful heart, be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and save you. Day of Vengeance, Jeremiah chapter 46, verse 10. For this is the day of the Lord God of hosts, a day of vengeance, that he may avenge him of his adversaries, and the sword shall devour, and it shall be satiate and made drunk with their blood. For the Lord God of hosts hath a sacrifice in the north country by the river Euphrates. Destructive payback for Babylon. Jeremiah 50, verse 15. Shout against her round about. She hath given her hand. Her foundations are fallen. Her walls are thrown down. For it is the vengeance of the Lord. Take vengeance upon her, as she hath done do unto her. Vengeance for a temple. Jeremiah 50, verse 28. 
the voice of them that flee and escape out of the land of Babylon, to declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God, the vengeance of his temple. Great Vengeance on the Philistines, Ezekiel 25, verses 14 to 17. And I will lay my vengeance upon Edom by the hand of my people Israel, and they shall do in Edom according to mine anger and according to my fury, and they shall know my vengeance, saith the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God, Because the Philistines have dealt by revenge, and have taken vengeance with a despiteful heart, to destroy it for the old hatred, therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I will stretch out my hand upon the Philistines, and I will cut off the Carathams, and destroy the remnant of the sea coast, and I will execute great vengeance upon them with furious rebukes, and they shall know that I am the Lord, when I shall lay my vengeance upon them. Avenged by an evil spirit from God. Judges chapter 9, verses 23 to 24. Then God sent an evil spirit between Abimelech and the men of Shechem, and the men of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech, that the cruelty done to the threescore and ten sons of Jerubbabel might come, and their blood be laid upon Abimelech their brother which slew them, and upon the men of Shechem, which aided him in the killing of his brethren. Vindictive Suicide Bomber for God Judges 16, verses 28 to 30 and Samson called unto the Lord, and said, O Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once, O God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two eyes. And Samson took hold of the two middle pillars upon which the house stood, and on which it was borne up, of the one with his right hand, and of the other with his left. And Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he bowed himself with all his might. And the house fell upon the lords, and upon all the people that were therein. So the dead which he slew at his death were more than they which he slew in his life. Furious Vengeance, Nahum chapter 1 verse 2 God is jealous, and the Lord revengeth. The Lord revengeth and is disfurious, the Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. See you in the next chapter.